Greetings in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Can you bow your hearts as we prepare to receive God's word? Let us pray. Our gracious God and heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence this morning, we are so honored to be called your sons and daughters. Lord, as we bow in your presence, I thank you, Lord, that this morning we are clear that your word is the highest form of reality. We submit to your word. We are open to the leading of the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, and to teach us this morning. And we know, God, in all our getting, we will get understanding so that we could become all that you'd have us be in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God forevermore. The theme that we have selected by the leading of the Holy Spirit for the year 2020 is the theme Kingdom Manifestation. And our key verse is found in John chapter 2, verse 11. It says there, This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. And this is such a significant portion of scripture because Jesus displayed the manifestation of his glory. And as sons and daughters of God, we thank God for God dwelling on the throne of our hearts. But there's more to it than Jesus dwelling on the throne of our hearts. Jesus' heart and his desire is to be manifested through us. And so we believe that as we go into this year, and not just this year, but this decade, that there will be a significant manifestation of God's glory through every son and daughter. At the beginning of this year, which marks a new decade, we really sense that through the leading of the Holy Spirit, God has uh, led us to look at foundations. The Bible says in Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And so we have embarked on, from the beginning of this year, looking at key foundational subjects, elementary doctrines of Christ that can build up our foundation so that we can accomplish what God has. When you go down to verse 5 in Psalm 11, the Bible says the Lord tests the righteous. And so what is God testing? God is testing the foundations. And so we've started by looking at foundations. We started uh, by looking firstly at identity, because without knowing who you are, whose you are, and what's been given to you, you will never fulfill your God-given assignment. And, and we thank God for those teachings. We've now moved on, and we started uh, the second part of it, where we're looking at faith to overcome. Faith to overcome. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18, verses 8, it says there, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And very interesting to note here that God is not looking for a church. God is not looking for church buildings. God is not even looking for believers. But God is looking for sons and daughters that live by faith. We are living in a season, family, where it becomes important for us to understand that the faith is the prescribed way for the sons and daughters of God to live. And so, when you look at Romans chapter 14, verses 23, the Bible says, For whatever is not from faith is sin. Uh, Romans 3, 23, the Bible declares that for all have sinned and come short of the glory. There is a standard that God would have every Christian to live by. And that standard is that we are ought to live by faith. And when we live by faith, we can live a life of an overcomer. We can be victorious. No weapon formed against us will prosper. And we will get the outcomes that God has. And so last week we concluded uh, the subject of what is faith. This morning we want to move forward. And we want to look at the characteristics or another lens, the behaviors of Christ. Now when you understand the special characteristics uh, that 
you find in the faith of God, you'll be amazed at the significant power that you will have uh, access to dynamic in its working. And so when you look at it through the lens of the behaviors of Christ, the Bible teaches in Luke chapter 6 verse 43, it says there, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. And so Bible scholars know that this is called typology and typology speaks of a type of. And so in this portion of scripture, Luke 6, we see there that the tree speaks of the person and the fruit speaks of their behavior or characteristics. And so it becomes imperative for us to understand that your behavior is a result of how you process your thoughts. Let me repeat that. Your behavior is a result of how you process your thoughts. And that becomes so important because systems create behavior. And so if we feed the wrong information into the system of how we process, we will then get the wrong behavior, like a computer. Whatever information you feed into that computer, that hard drive and that software will process that information and give you a particular outcome. And so if you feed it with the wrong information, you're not going to get the right outcome. So likewise, when we begin to understand the attributes or characteristics or the behaviors, we have to understand it becomes imperative that if I want to get the right behavior, if I want to get the right habits, and if I want to get the right outcomes, then it's imperative that I ensure that I feed the right information. And this is so important and so critical. And so we want to look at the behaviors of Christ or the attributes of Christ or the characteristics of a son or a daughter that is living by faith. Now, these are powerful guidelines because if we can adhere to these guidelines, we can then ensure that we are on the path that God has for us. Sons and daughters that are living by faith. That as Luke 18 declares, when the Son of Man returns, Will he find faith? He will find faith because we are those that choose to live by these guidelines. And so the first characteristic of faith is, number one, faith is what pleases God. The Bible says in Romans, sorry, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. And so we see here that there is no other way. The Bible is very clear. It says without faith. And so there's no other way you can please God except that you live a life of faith in the Son of God. Everything God does, God does by faith. Amen. And so because we are created in His image and in His likeness as sons and daughters of God, we are also expected to live by faith in the Son of God. We are not called to live in our strength, in our wisdom, or in our ability. Very interesting. Even Jesus didn't operate in not one original thought. He operated in the mind of God through the faith of God. And so family, if you want to get the outcomes that God has, you're going to have to understand that you are born to live in the faith of God. The Bible says in Romans 14, 23, that that which is not of faith is sin. And so if we're not living by faith, then we're not going to get the outcomes that God has for us. Anything outside faith does not please God. And I declare that as sons and daughters of the Most High God, we will understand that that's the first guideline, that I'm designed to live by faith because everything about my life and everything that I want to do is that I want to bring praise, glory, and honor to God. Number two, faith is the lifestyle of a believer. Romans chapter 1 from verses 16 through to 17. It says there, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek therein. So what is the subject? The subject is the gospel. The gospel of Christ. Amen. So in the gospel of Christ, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. As children of God, there is a prescribed way that God would have us to live. And that is that we are called to live by faith. When you study this in the Amplified, very interesting. The Bible says both springing from faith and leading to faith. Disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. And so we can see here that God's desire for us 
is that we are called to live by faith. Now, in the natural, to live in the natural, you have to breathe in and breathe out every moment of every day. Amen. And so likewise, in the spirit, we are called to live by faith 24-7. Faith is not a hobby. Faith must not only be exercised when we have a crisis, but we are called to live in the faith of God 24-7. And so we must make a decision that no matter where I'm at, whether I am on a mountaintop or whether I am down in the valley, I will live the way God would have me live, and that is to live by faith in the Son of God. The third thing that we find, the third, the third guideline that we find, which is so important, is that faith resides in the Word of God. And so if I want to grow this faith, if I want to develop this faith, if I believe that there's more that God has for me, then I'm going to understand then that one of the attributes or characteristics is that faith resides in the Word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, So faith cometh by hearing and hearing, by the word of God. And so we see here that the conduit that releases faith into my life is the word of God. Now, faith is not the word of God, but it resides in the word of God. Amen. And so if I want to grow and increase my measure of faith, then I need to understand then that I need to grow in my revelation and my understanding of the word of God. The word of God is full of of the faith of God. Amen. And if I want to grow in the word, then I can grow. As I grow my faith, I grow my word level. Now, we look at it very simply. Low word level equals low faith level. High word level equals high faith level. No word level equals no faith level. And so I need to be mature and I need to I need to reason with myself to acknowledge the measure or the level of faith that I'm operating in and then make a decision that if I want to grow my faith, then I must grow the word level in my life. And the more I grow the word level, the more I can get the outcomes that God has. The fourth measurement that we can look at is that, is that faith is valuable and precious. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 1, the Bible says, Simon Peter a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith. Faith is so valuable and faith is so precious. And we, we understand why. Because faith is designed that if I use it effectively, if I use it wisely, if I use it correctly, then I can please God. And that is my desire. All that I want to do with my life, every Christian all that we want to accomplish with our lives is to lift up God's name, glorify God's name, and bring Him the praise, the honor, and the glory. And so faith is precious. Faith is also a medium of exchange for everything that we need. And so if you want to receive and access the precious and the valuable things that Jesus has set aside for you in your inheritance, then you're going to have to exercise faith in the Son of God. And as you do that, you'll be amazed at the outcomes that God will release to you. And then number five, faith can increase and faith can grow. Luke chapter 17, verse five, it says, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Why? Because they saw the level that Jesus operated on. And they knew that if they were created in His image, and in his likeness, then their faith too has the potential to increase and the potential to grow. And so we must understand, family, we must have a desire for our faith to increase and our faith to grow. The Bible teaches in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3, it says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. How powerful is this? Not only does your faith has the capacity to grow, but your faith has the capacity to grow exceedingly. You know, we when you be, be, begin to understand and believe God for things that are impossible, for things that only through His supernatural power can be attained, you begin to understand that it, it's part of that journey is that you will be attacked, Part of that journey is that you will go through some severe challenges and circumstances. But I want you to know that no matter what you're going through, 
you must understand that you can display the behavior of Christ that no matter what you're going through, keep on speaking faith, keep on confessing faith, uh, keep on calling those things that be not as though they were and don't get distracted and don't allow people to rob you or misfocus you from what God has. I can assure you one thing that you will get the outcome. So when you begin to study men and study women that live by faith, you begin to see these attributes emanate from them. Why? Because they believe that God is their only source. And so as we continue, I want to take your attention to, to, for you to know this, that, that knowing the word of God is significant and powerful, but it's not good enough. You have to go past the knowing to the believing. Amen. Because when you begin to believe, you begin to see the outcomes that God has. Look at this uh, significant scripture in John chapter 10, verses 37. It says there, if I do not do the work of my father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. And so we see here that Jesus is saying here that knowing is wonderful, but what will convince men and women to know that you're a true man of God, that you are a true woman of God, is not just having head knowledge. It's just not, not just having an understanding of certain things, but we have to go beyond just having an understanding to getting to a place where we believe it. That word believe is a very significant word. In the Hebrew, the word believe means to have faith. And so when you believe, it means that you have faith and you're prepared to exercise that faith. Mark chapter 11, verse 24, the Bible says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And so when you believe, believing is acting on the faith of God. Amen. And when you begin to act on the faith of God, not only do I know it, the Bible says faith without works is dead, James 2.17. And so not only do I know what God has for me, not only do I have a strategy, and that's important, not only do I have vision, that's significant, but more than that, I'm prepared to walk on the water. I know God has a great life. I know God has significant stuff for me. I know God has breakthrough for me. I know God wants to show himself strong on my behalf. But more than that, now, uh, Father, I am ready to stand on the word of God and activate this word and act on this word and do what you'd have me do. When you get to that level, believe you me, family, you'll be amazed at the outcomes that God has for you. Look at the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verses uh, 37, it says there, for by your works, you'll be justified and by your works, you'll be condemned. And so as you begin to work the word of faith, in your life, as you begin to believe that God will do this for you, you become more freer. Amen. You might not be as free as what you want to be, but I can assure you one thing. As you live by faith, as you exercise your faith, you will become more freer, more liberated, and have more zeal and confidence knowing that what God has for you, God will manifest and show himself strong on your behalf. And so, what anchors our beliefs? Because that's so important. Because in the midst of storms, in the midst of trials, in the midst of circumstances, what anchors me to know that in the midst of all this, I can still believe God. That God in times of uncertainty will show himself strong and come through. And so I want to show you two things this morning here. Firstly, the Father God is committed to you. You have to know that. You have to settle it in your heart. God is committed to you. God is committed to me. And so if you look at Psalm 91 from verses 14 to verses 16. I want you to see something very interesting here in the psalm. You'll find here that the phrase, I will, is mentioned six times. I will. This is God affirming that this is, that he will stand strong on your behalf. He'll protect you and he will be your source no matter what. So we see the commitment of God. Let's read the verse, Psalm 91. Verses 14, it says there, because he has set his love upon me. This is God speaking. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. 
I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And so we see this phrase mentioned six times. And what does it tell us? It tells us and gives us an understanding that God is in total control. We might look at a world system and see it crumbling before us, but if there's one sure thing I want you to know, that God is in total control. The Bible says in Psalm 24 verses 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. And so God is in control total control. I don't know where you are in life. I don't know what you're experiencing in life, but if there's one thing that I want to assure you, God is in control. God is for you. God is with you and God is on your side. Secondly, not only is God committed to you, but Jesus is also committed to you. And very interesting, in this portion of scripture, I want you to see on six occasions, the word I is mentioned. In, uh, in Psalm 91, we saw that I will, speaking of God, mentioned six times. And here in John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18, we see the word I mentioned six times as well. And so very interesting, when John 10, we know the verse, John 10, verse 10, the Bible says, uh, the thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And then Jesus says, but I have come that you might have life to the full until it overflows. And then you come down to verses 17. So Jesus has guaranteed us that we will have life to the full till it overflows because he has defeated the enemy. Now, when you look at verses 17, it says there, therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. And so we see again here that Jesus is in total control. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verses 20, the latter part says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. And so I want to encourage you, family, this morning you're going to have to understand who you are, as a child of God. You have to understand that knowing truth is wonderful and we must have a hunger and a knowledge. Amen. Because without knowledge, we will be destroyed. But we have to go beyond just knowing about or knowing truth. We have to get to a place where we believe. And the word believe, as you know, it means to have faith. We have to be those sons and daughters that can activate the faith of the living God in our lives. And as we activate that faith, we will get the outcomes that God has. We are ambassadors placed on the earth to represent the kingdom. And as we represent the kingdom, we will represent it effectively and accurately. And as the Bible declares in Luke chapter 18 and verses 8, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? I declare that we are a company of believers, that we not only have knowledge, but we have a belief system within us that these attributes and these behaviors of ours will conform to the pattern of the Word of God, the blueprint of the Word of God. And as we behave in a Christ-like manner and a Christ-like attitude, we will get the outcomes that God has for us. And so I release that over your life. I release it into your family. And I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. This morning, you might be watching this broadcast or you might be listening to it uh, at home. And you maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've never been exposed to Christianity. Or maybe you've been in a place where you were discouraged and you your relationship was not right with Jesus. We want to give you the privilege this morning, right where you are. You can, in your lounge, wherever you are, even if you're driving, you can just say the sinner's prayer and you can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so I want you to bow your hearts as you repeat this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, this morning I open up my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I repent from all sin and unrighteousness. Today I declare that today is the first day of the rest of my life. I am set free. I am a child of the living God in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, 
Congratulations. The whole of heaven rejoices because you've come home to your father. And so I want to pray for everyone out there, every family, no matter what we're going through, no matter what the circumstances are, we have to not just know about this great God, not just know about this great uh, revelation knowledge and, and, and his word, but more than that, I want to encourage you. We have to be true believers. And as we saw, the word believe means to act in faith, to operate in faith. And so I want to pray over you that through the season, no weapon formed against you will prosper. You will not be defeated. No sickness, no plague will come now you're dwelling, but you will live and operate in the faith of God. Receive this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, as I release faith into every family, into every person, I decree and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. I thank you, Father, that you are in total control of the earth. As we looked in your word in Psalm 91, God, we began to see that you are in total control of the earth. God, as we looked in John 10, verse 17 and 18, we began to see that Jesus, you are in total control of the earth. So we surrender our lives to you. We yield our lives to you, Father. And Father, we thank you that through faith, we can draw from your glory, your power, and your ability. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.